Hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of this campaign, which we're using TNO, Brave New World, Code Doctor Update, and which we're playing against the Central Siberian Federation. As you can see, we're currently beating up the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. It's May 12th, 1969. Nice. And we're here to beat the crap out of these people. So, uh, I have basically, actually, between this episode and the last episode, I completely replayed the entire campaign. Um, but if you'd like to read about La Chuchia Listitia, please go ahead, as well as Crocodile, as well as Abakan. And I guess Puridoka. Please go right ahead, but it is what it is. But I don't think we'll have too many issues beating these guys up. I've optimized pretty much sort of how we want this camp, oh, not how the campaign wants to go, but like what we should be doing it pretty much. Um, overall, we lost 5,000. Project uh, Puridoka, inconclusive. It's impossible to learn what without making mistakes. That's what our engineers have told us after the first series of test runs for the M50 prototype and exposed several major design flaws. Due to the bulk of the plane, additional engines had to be incorporated into the design to allow it to reach its target speed. The additional bulk of the engine reduced the plane's aerodynamic profile, making it less maneuverable and more vulnerable to interceptor aircraft. Additional issues with the bomb deployment mechanism made accurate targeting highly difficult. <coughs> Despite the multitude of problems that have rendered the M50 an unusable design, our engineers have managed to salvage some of the more innovative ideas incorporated in the prototype. The test proved that the concept of high-altitude strategic bombing is both possible and achievable with improved design, and with better engines, it should be possible to produce a strategic bomber that is capable of achieving high speeds without issue. The bomber just won't be the M50. It's better than nothing, but it is what it is. Uh, so we've done all sorts of stuff here. Anything else we need to do there? Not really. I want to show you that we're using this, uh, basically 21, co uh, 21 divisions of infantry that are 80, 28 combat with. I actually threw anti-air here because we ran out of space here. I'm experimenting with heli supply companies which would drastically use or uh, reduce the supply used by our infantry. Just as testing out, you know. We're, we're, I'm totally a tester. Totally on the forefront of testing out what works and what doesn't work in TNO. Or at least, you know, Hoi 4 combat, but... Supply uses 0.42, which is actually really nice. Um, hopefully you should have literally like almost no supply issues until you get to the far north. And even then, I'm not seeing any supply issues. So, uh, Additionally, with this campaign, I would like to see... Ooh, if you really read about a hydroelectric station in Kutsk, please go ahead. Those are surely eight in our efforts. So, well, um, I, with Recon, I do want to try scout helicopter companies. It does give you a little bit... Ooh, actually, ooh. It gives you a little more breakthrough and reconnaissance and tiny, tiny bit more organization as well as... Uh, uh, piercing, but the fuel usage goes down, production cost goes way up, oh man, defense goes down, soft attack goes down, there's a lot of red, fuel consumption goes down, air attack goes down, you know, actually, what else do you have here besides that? Scott Helicopter Companies gives you a little bit more movement though, that's kind of nice, but that doesn't mean nothing though. Um, air assault companies are ex extremely important though, so with these, we'll see what happens. I might replace support artillery with air assault companies, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Scott Companies, I wanted to just try them out, like I said. Uh, military Police, sure, why not? Logistics, duh, I guess, why not? Let's do it. Oh, we probably don't need that, honestly, but whatever. Armaments, nice. Alright, so we're over here, and we should probably grab some better artillery. For now, because we'll probably need it, at least for now. Uh, 55,000 versus 13,000, how much more manpower do they have? Well, we also have some comments to go through as well. We're not sure how much more manpower they have. They have up to 14 divisions, though. But, happy July. But, one of the comments says, Sigh with the USA. Someone says, So far, the Russian Federation has been my favorite country in the New Order. The development team has put a lot of a thing, a lot of effort on the small nation with a completely interesting focus tree and interesting, t interesting story. Someone says, I'm glad I sigh with the USA, but it's up to you. I know. I want to go with the USA as well, but like, we got to support at least, that's a little ahead of time, whatever. Um, Sibir, as much as possible for now, because like, it's not looking very good for us. Also, I did lower the loyalty and power of these guys, or at least very much the power loyalty we don't really care about. And actually, we're getting a pretty good bonus from Sabir, so. They don't have a lot of loyalty, but they're very powerful. As any mega corporation should be. Uh, GDP is going up. The debt of GDP ratio did go up higher, but as we're conquering more, we're sp our growth is 13%. Inflation's at 1.4%. My good lord. Very nice. Improving infantry equipment, or just equipment, heavy equipment. We're almost at. We're, Almost below 31% unemployment, or the poverty rate, I should say. My bad. Un uh, poverty rate, poverty rate, poverty rate. Um, so, yeah, once we unify these guys, that'd be great. It looks like we're going to have to fight, though, Tukhachevsky, which is better than Zukov, but still. Oh my god, look at that second organization. Uh, ah, Mario! Oh, also, as I, like I said, I had to replay this, so Mario's here now, and Omsk it, did not have to fight Pavel or Batov or whoever. Um, Pavel Batov. But Mario's here. 
And instead of Speer leading Germany now, uh, it's Bormann, this bald guy. So, um, other than that, I think pretty much everything else is pretty much the same. Well, maybe not. The world generally is the same-ish. We have Philip Hart now in America. Um, scientific stuff. Yeah, that's good. We only get one and a half political power a day, which is obviously not enough, but whatever. But here are some companies of what I really want before we go to war with Germany. Even though we're going to need a crap ton of divisions before we try to even attempt to fight the Germans. Oh my god. Borussia. Yeah. 91,000, nice. Up to 21 divisions now, but that doesn't mean they're any good. Oh, we go to Cheetah. Cheetah. Oh my god, they're just melting away. 57. Oh god. I love it. I love it a lot. Actually, what's going to go up next? Academic base. Oh, we got an air, uh, air base. Nice. Uh, research facilities. Well, that. Oh, we're already a modern. We'll go to advanced soon, too. Even more growth? Oh, yes, please. <clears throat> Mass mechanization is... Is that the highest one? No, ma modern agriculture is the highest one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Base bleed is very good. We got developed healthcare. We got function administration, which actually... It's going to get a streamlined bureaucracy soon, too. It doesn't help us out that much more, but I will take any benefits that we could possibly get. But happy September, everybody. Uh, another comment from yesterday said, Can you do a TNO USA as progressive MCS? Maybe eventually. That does take a while to get to, so we will see. Um, anything over here? Industrial expertise is experienced industrial base, and we'll get to innovative industry soon as well. Uh, industrial equipment is going up by quite a, bu quite a bit. And watch for cronyism, it will soon uh, get up to political interference, which actually lose more political power, which sucks, but whatever. Hey, look, an encirclement. I love it. Better anti-area. We are using anti-area in the division, so... Oh, look at this guy we made. 20 combat with. Elite soldiers. They have attack helicopters. They have heli support companies. They have air assault companies. Just very, very strong divisions all around. And we're making two of those. I might actually consider just making, like, 40 comp... You know what? We'll probably make 40 combat with. Lower by one. It's fine. It costs money, too, but whatever. Intercept providers. What else do we have here? Anything else? No. In progress, of course, with everything else. Uh, prepare industrial centers for the Second Siberian War, even though we went to war with them too. So, what else do we have here? Ah. Sub attack. That's going to be so needed. So needed. Can you just like kill these guys off? Literally, just kill them off. All right. With it being so close, let's start grabbing some of that research speed. Zaya, yes, please. Ooh, education. Beautiful. Wait, do we actually have? We have a little bit of money here, huh? 102, 22, a little more than 12% growth. Inflation is starting to go up quite a bit higher. I want to help poverty at least one more time before we have to get to the next stage, if possible. Beautiful. Go, 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 go. Tinda. Ah, happy October, everybody. Hey, we have better military professionalism. If you'd like to do that, please go right ahead. Absolutely beautiful. No special drink today, but yeah, we lose political power. So pocket consumption goes further down. Less planning speed, more recovery rate, more max planning, and we beat Irkutsk. Anyone who by the port of Magadan, please go right ahead too. The gateway to Russia has been secured. Beautiful. So now I guess we're gonna go over here. 69. There's not too much of a benefit for us to like wait and convert these guys back. Uh Go and do that. I need. I want the money. You. I'm greedy. I want the money. Uh, do that too. Over here, though, convoys. Very nice. All right. So do we have to core these like normal? Yes. Integrate all of these regions. It's gonna hurt growth. Oh no. Weekly stability and political power, but we get a core. Increase growth by a t barely anything. But admin efficiency just goes up. Actually, where are we for admin efficiency? Oh. Oh, we have to. Oh, we have not. We don't have enough political power. God dang it. Oh, but stability's gonna be hurt. Oh, minus 0.4 a week. Oh, that's so bad. We could do Siberian reunification, but I want to keep investing in other people too. Oh, oh, this is painful doing it like this. Uh, I want to poverty at least one more time. There's no rush to get to there, anyways. So there's literally no rush to wait to get there. Oh, yearly death is much better. Uh, growth is not as good. 105, not good. Oh, but I want to do poverty. I probably won't be able to get there again. No. How bad is it right now? Point. Oh my gosh, 0.88. Yeah, that has hurt us pretty bad. Plus, minus 0.45. 
Oh, okay, if we have to do Siberian Reunification, we get 20% more stability, more naval XP, remove... Wait, do we have state fishing armadas? Central Design Bureau is pretty good. Well, the Legacy of Siberian Plan is very good, especially for that factory output, plus 32.5%. I don't think we have that. I'm going pipeline. Well, screw it, we're doing this. Welcome to the Siberian Federation, my friends. Time for another focus. Here's the atomic age, though. Ooh. That's a very mandate. After years of struggle, the unthinkable has been achieved. The vastness of Siberia has been reunified under one flag. Securing this much of Russia has been no easy feat. To secure our hold, we might have to fight off every devil of Russia's past, from monarchists to fanatics to fascist thugs to Soviet holdouts. We have vanquished them all, and now stand triumphant as the masters of the East and the rightful government of all Russia. The conquest of Siberia has taken its toll on us. Russia remains fractured, but even now we are already one of the largest nations on Earth. And administering a territory this massive requires a strong and stable government. We should take this opportunity to secure a hold and ensure that our administration is prepared for the tasks that lie ahead. The final reunification with the West is near one way or another. We will not be caught unprepared. Whew. Yeah, these guys are going to die. Tukachevsk is going to be our main contender. Um, if you want to rebuild into the atomic age, please go ahead. As well as establish closed facilities, a foundation for research. Address the uranium problem, expand the Siberian mines, or store materials, chase the sun, because I've read all those a lot before. So, there's that. Um, 1970, might as well. <coughs> Reform our commitments. Ooh, more growth, but definitely need that. Ooh, slightly decreased scoring time, consolidate the new territories. Yeah, I'll probably do that one. It's almost impossible to explain just how vast and sparsely populated Siberia is. Outside of a few urban centers like Kirkutsk and Novosibirsk, it has millions of square kilometers of wilderness and scattered villages. It's especially true of the newly integrated eastern re regions. Even the Tsars and Soviets never fully extended their administrations of this region. And the eastern warlords never came close to matching what they did accomplish. The task of integrating this territory has been left to us. The urban centers of the east will form a nucleus of a new administrative web that will cover all of the eastern Siberia. Every town and village, every isolated hamlet, all of them will be assigned uh, to districts and administrative regions. <clears throat> and each will have administrators and politicians appointed to oversee them and represent them within a government. Uh, no more will the Far East be an isolated backwater forgotten by the Russian government. It is an integral part of the Russian nation and be treated as such. A den of radicals. Bokurishkin tossed a report onto his desk in disgust. It was a general overview of the situation in Far Eastern Siberia, and reading through it all, dashed traces of optimism he had felt about the region. It wasn't all bad, to be fair. Controlling the poor town of Magadan finally gave him access to the scene with a little investment in Irkutsk. It could become a major economic and industrial hub, but aside from the few scattered highlights or bright spots like the report, that was nothing but bad news. The Far East had always been difficult to administer, even for a united Russian nation. Now he had to attempt the same task with far less resources than the Empire or the Union had been able to fuel. On top of that, everything else, there was the man of the main topic of the report, partisans. Based on... <clears throat> Early reports alone, Pokrushkin's security experts were telling him that there was no less than eight organized radical terrorist organizations operating in the Far East, and possibly as many as a dozen. This all came in stripes, fascists, communists, monarchists, anarchists, zealots, Cossacks, separatism, but more besides. The only reason they hadn't already collapsed the entire Eastern of partisan warfare was because they had spent all as much time fighting each other as a central government. The report warned that it might not be the case forever. The longer they're allowed to exist, the more likely it is like like-minded groups that will form a common front against a newly reformed Russian Federation. This cannot be allowed to happen. Pokurishkin picked up the phone and started dialing the number. If consolidating Central Siberia taught him anything, it was that there was only one way to do with the radicals. They were so wrapped up in their own meaningless theories and ideologies that they barely even lived in the real world, and that made them all too dangerous to tolerate. They'd be dragged out of their holes and brought into the light where the people of Russia could see them for what they were. Not brave partisans, but desperate terrorists with no place in any Russia. There's no room for mercy here. Root out the remnants. Or reform our commitments. <clears throat> Excuse me. With a sudden expansion of our territory and associated advance on the world stage, eyes across the world are studying us, watching for our next move to see what it signals. We must show them that we are still the same government they've learned to trust. Our impending reunification of Russia has not changed any of our agreements, and we're so happy to do business with the other nations of the world. The acquisition of Russia's longest coastline and several developed ports has made the matter of trade much easier. The nations and companies who have already invested in Russia are excitedly offering to expand for operations further. Meanwhile, from Tokyo to Washington, we've gained the attention of government and business alike. It's time to double down on a message while everyone else is watching. Russia is open for the business. Fe federal elections, oh boy. Alright, so he's got two of them done. It's going to hurt her growth and whatnot. But hopefully this will not hurt her growth as much as it did earlier. Oh, oh that's painful. So painful. 4% inflation. Oh, just kill me now. We're at the remnants. 
The Russian people are grateful to have a strong democratic government ruling over them at last, but there are still a few troublemakers who wish to overthrow us. These various extremists, whether they be fascists or communists or anarchists or monarchists, are all unified by the hatred for our government. These radicals held low enough profiles to be missed by the first round of crackdowns and arrests we made whenever we defeated the bosses, but now they've returned to make trouble, we must put a stop to it. Hey, look, better industrial expertise. There's no reason to assume that work, work, what worked before won't work again. A combination of surveillance, sabotage, arrest, and radical, anti-radical propaganda will be enough to cripple the various terrorist associations or societies that have cro cropped up across Siberia and turn the public firmly against their divisive messages. <sighs> Terrorists. Uh, we can wait for later to get all the benefits from coring stuff, but we're just going to do it now. Hey, but that's a little better. Not bad. Oh, God. Why? Why does growth increase by so little when we have for 55 days? Okay, no, and the growth will come back. Okay, weekly stability, not so much, or political power, but the growth will come back, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, okay, thank God. Oh, Jesus Christ. It hurt me. Election season! It's no secret that the co rulers of the nation do not get along publicly. Pokorishkin and Shukshin uh, present a united front. Uh, but it is well known that they have agreed on little for years. The two men have been able to set aside their differences and cooperate up until now, but. Well, the recent acquisition of Eastern Siberia and the prospect of national reunification growing greater every day. Their disagreements have become too great to ignore. The co rulers have agreed to that the only way to settle this is to let the peop Russian people decide. Shukshin is campaigning on a platform of reform and democracy, pledging to create a truly equal and free Russian federation with a government elected by and subservient to the people before all else. But Kurishkin has opted for a more conservative approach, stating its commitment to democracy but reiterating that Russia is in need of a strong government capable of uniting and defending its people. Uh, only time will tell which message is more popular. Well, hopefully, we campaign well. Because if we don't, we're kind of screwed with this campaign for getting keep Pokershkin. Or get rid of Pokershkin. Hundreds of men. The truck rolled down the dirt road through the forest, jostling the men inside. A few smokes, a uh, few smoked in silence, filling the back pack of the truck, or the back of the truck with the smell of cigarettes. Some slept, their snores inaudible over the rumbling engine. Fedor was seated at the rear of the truck, staring out the window while the next to him luck continued to jabber incessantly. Hey, Fedor, how do you know when you've killed a communist? I don't know, love how? Fedor asked, or said. When he started to bleed out, he calls for his own blood reactionary and tells it to read more theory. Love laughed as his own joke, though Fedor was unamused. Seeing all this, Love tried again. How do you know when he killed a fascist? Fedor glared at him. When he starts to bleed out, he calls you a Jew dude and says his blood is too strong to leave his body. Once more, Love cackled his own lack of wit, and once more, Fedor remained silent. When Love finished laughing, Fedor spoke, Have you ever killed anyone, Love? Love looked at him confused. Maybe I fired my gun in combat a lot, but I'm not sure. Well, have you ever watched anyone bleed out? No. Well, I have. I watched five men die, a communist, two anarchists, a fascist, and a Cossack. None of them talked about race or theory when they were dying. They all cried for their mothers. I definitely have heard that one before, but whatever. Ooh, the Sid plan. As the elections for the Federations ramp up, it becomes clear that despite Alexander Pokrishkin's politi uh, prior political ascendancy, they has been challenged in the very ascendancy by none other than Vasily Shukshin, the mayor of Barnall. Both men occupy highly prestigious and various important positions within the Federation, but over the years have come to represent two very different currents of thoughts in regards to the Federation itself. Alexander Pokrishkin, the main man that saved the Federation from itself and engineered its highly successful ascent, has campaigned on a platform of economic expansion, national stability, and measured patriotism. Vasily Shukshin, on the other hand, represents the opposition to Pokrishkin's monopoly on power, comprised of Locals from Barnall, supporters of a liberal democratic federation, and dissenters turned traitors from Bukhurskin's camp. Shukshin's platform is focused around political reform and emphasis of a return to the roots, culturally and politically, especially in regards to remembering the origin of the federation and a distaste for tyranny. As each respective political player begins their campaign, only time will tell which other two will come on top. Expand the vocal mass. Controlling Siberia and the people who live in it has always been a challenge for the past Russian governments, and no doubt be a challenge for us as well. This is made no easier by the fact that the Eastern Siberia is now crawling with ex-military men who fought for the one leader or another. Now that they find themselves with nothing to do but grow bitter and resentful of our new rule. These men can be dangerous, and but they also represent an opportunity. <clears throat> The Volkomats, our system of military commissariats, have proven successful in maintaining our control of the nation and keeping extremist organizations on the run. Expanding the system to encompass a new territory would help lock down the East. Recruiting disaffected army officers, black shirts, and NKVD agents into the Volkomats will give us a way to put the skills of those unpleasant people to work for us while placing them directly under our, our control. We have the future in the Commissariat. Cool. Our Eastern Bastion. Not bad. A disciplined force. That's not bad, too. Fund the Central Design Bureau. Oh, but poverty and growth. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, here's an Eastern Bastion. Port city Magadan used to be an insignificant, even if it didn't even appear on the maps of Eastern Russia. Then during the decades of anarchy, it became, un it became important because it was Russia's largest unoccupied port, but even then, after years of improvements made by the various warlords who controlled it, still barely up to the task of serving as their primary port. The rebuilding of Russia will require doing significant amounts of trading and business with the nations of the world, and our ability to trade with them is limited by our port's capacity. Both business and government officials have been urging us to invest more into Magadan and to complete its transformation to Russia's new doorstep to the world. 
asking that you receive. Magna will become worthy of responsible, responsibility thrust upon it, and we should finally have full, unfettered access to the global marketplace. I'm going to save real quick, just in case we fail in the elections as Shukshin, which I don't think we will, but you never know, you know. But, oh well, we're here to make money. Alright, oh, so what do we have here? Ah. Co rulers. Look at this guy. Look at this handsome guy. Yeah, they did, a, I think, honestly, a better port a job with the portrait of this guy than this guy. I think this is still a base TNO you know, portrait of, of Pokrishkin. It still looks much more realistic, though, especially that hair. You and Democratic activists. If Shukshin's campaign is supposed to succeed, the opposition of, to the Siloviki must stand united. But Kurshkin is likely already exploding the ideological differences between our, among our allies, so we must act quick. Shukshin shall organize numerous meetings with, with democratic advocates, calling for cohesion and a unified front. If we should further truly make our nation a democracy, we must not let our last chance be torn to shreds. Denounce corruption. Ultimately, our goal in this election will be up in a system that has crushed our fair military, our country for so long. The state-sponsored oppression, the greed, violence, and corruption, we must lay all the bare for the people to see and take a stand against it in the name of democracy, freedom, and the true values that we form this country to represent. We'll denounce the Silovics for what they truly are, corrupt oppressors. Fear of the common people. Oh, give more stability. Small amount. Talk to sympathetic officers. The country we now live in, once a mere warlord state, was not built just by statesmen, but by soldiers and the lion-hearted leaders. Thus, the officers of the military are deeply respected, and although many are apolitical, there are a good few who are deeply invested or interested in the workings of our nation. Among them, there should be the, those sympathetic to our cause, to freeing our country from the shackles of the Silovics. We should approach them and make sure they stay on our side and see by using their apple reserves. Or resources. <laughs> um, I want to get to appear to the common people, but... Hold speech in Barnall. Barnall is the heart of a democratic movement where it all began. We'll hold a rally there for all Russians to see, and the Shukshin will make his case for the people. He will do this with an impassioned speech before the crowds of supporters and the radios of folks across the country. Hope for the message of freedom will ring true in the hearts of those who open their ears to it. I'll do this one. Shoot and smash. They struck at midnight. The array preceded by the, by the blinding light of flares scattered across around the building as the soldiers sprang the trap. Machine guns sprayed death, barely feet off the ground as the infantry sprang into action, just uh, pushing towards the structure in a textbook-style assault. Ducking into cover before a dozen slugs were tore through the space they had formed occupied, the air went out of his chest. He took a few deep breaths and blinked his eyes once, twice, three times. Good enough. Firing a fully bullets in the general bullets in the general direction of the structure, a sergeant rolled left to join the rest of his unit, already going through the motions of the battle drill. The screaming, shooting, and dying lasted all five minutes before the white hand hand handkerchiefs went up, and the black shirt of figure stepped out and surrendered, bodies surrounding the once picturesque cabin. I was counted losses and took inside. Ivana gave the sorry looking black shirts a clear of contempt for all their enthusiasm for violence. You see, the anarchists handle themselves better than these jackboot thugs. Leaders and criminals do not make an army. Oh, more production units, eh? Nice. Um, we're pretty good on 15. 15 is already pretty decent. We need more military factories, definitely. We gotta get ready for that uh, unification war. I'm not even making basic anti air. My god. Oh, so bad. Plenty of attack alleys, hopefully. 15, we're trying to make a prison. Oh, I guess I think we could get four, five more. There we go. Feeling generous today, you know. The Volkomet, the future in the Commissariat. Never been, never been easy for the Russian. Or Ruslan and his family, not under the communists, not under the fascists, and not, not so far at least under the new regime of the Federation. His father, they'd always been important, extreme. And the Rush, Ruslan had watched as his father, uncle, and brother, brother worked themselves into the ground trying to keep their farm working. He thought of that to be his eventual fate as well, but then accompanying his father into the village to sell the produce, he'd seen the poster. Men were needed, it said, to fill out the many new commissariats the Federation had established with the Far East to help distribute supplies, provide order, and of course, secure the land for the state. It all sold off for pay. Pay far in excess of what Ruslan could earn selling vegetables, and so after seeing his father to the market, uh, he had walked towards the Elisma booth set up in the square. His father had not been happy, but he had in the end understood. Rush, Ruslan. I was trying to secure a better future for himself, and the man he could not begrudge that his son that, allowing him to part with his blessing. Ruslan could only hope that he was successful. A boy departs, will a man return? The last gasp. Uh, uh, Captain Ivan Brantov led his men to the streets of Irkutsk in the dead of night. He moved, his men moved in a well, as a well oiled machine in the darkness. They were in the deep industrial district of Irkutsk, closing in on the workers' hideouts or housing that died at the outskirts of the factories. Their mission was a simple one to root out the elements of Yagoda's NKVD that had survived the strife in the Far East. As they approached the target, he motioned for his men to split into two teams. His team would reach the front of the enemy structure and abandon apartment complex. The second team, under the command of Lieutenant Ugalov, will be tasked with breaching the rear entry and preventing the enemy from making a retreat. Ivan approached the doorway into the building unmolested and had his men stuck up on the doors. As his men entered the building and were met with eerie silence, the men went about this securing the first door and found nothing. There was no sign of this floor it had been inhabited for years. 
If on the three men behind in the lobby to act as a rear guard and press forward against toward the stairwell. This would be the most dangerous part of the op op operation. Traversing the stairwell into the second and third floors, he crept up the stairs slowly, keeping watch for any sort of traps. He, it was as he ascended the last step that he heard the gunfire from the base of the stairs. They used the elevator shaft to get behind him. Yvonne began to shout orders, but was cut off as he had to dive for cover as soldiers on the second floor opened fire. He was only able to take rear pot shots at his assailants. He was able to drop one before being hit in the shoulder. His rifle clattered from his grasp and fell down the stairwell. A curse and drew his sidearm only to be per perforated by fire from a man on the stairs above him. Yvonne's body tumbled onto the men, his men below. Before the NKVD could celebrate, the rear team made their appearance. The communists were defeated, but it was a pyrrhic victory at best. What a frickin' mess. A disciplined force. Our military is one of the best in Russia. Our unification of is proof enough of that for anyone, but being the best in Russia does not mean we're ready to take on the world so far. Our military has fought bandits and warlords and semi-industrialized regional rivals, but we have yet to take on a full modern war-ready military power. And considering the dangerous state of the world, we may have to have to sooner than we'd like. Pretty very... Hey, we live in the managerial age, after all. Awesome. A technological gap between our forces and those of the Germans and the Japanese is shrinking due to the heroic efforts of our design bureaus. But technology alone does not make a modern army. It does not matter how good the gun of the man is if the man is too afraid to fire it. Our army is not a disorganized rabble, but its discipline will leave room for improvement. We will see that these improvements are made and our men are refined into hardened warriors and ready for conflicts ahead. Partisan activity decreases. It has been reported to the central government that efforts of the National Anti-Partisan Task Force have continued to show considerable effort. Across the territories in which they have been uh, deployed, exec Executed operations against remnants of the both RFP as well as various communist organs have proven highly successful, with only several reported failures. Large numbers of insurgents and dissidents have been captured or killed, and enormous quantities of material have been captured, and the insurgent leadership has been greatly compromised. Concurrently, elements of uh, state governments have returned to or been established in areas declared secure from partisan influence. It has only returned life to normal for millions of our citizens, but greatly strengthened our control of and extraction from the regions in question. However, we must take care not to grow complacent. Though activity has, for, through vigorous and sometimes bloody action, decreased, fanatical elements do remain and they are still to be considered extremely dangerous. We must stay the course until our lands are secured and be purged of partisan elements for good. The campaign continues. Good. Port of Profit. Have received a uh, significant investment in its development under the rule of the Federation. The seaside city of Magadan has transformed from a backwater second-rate harbor, braved only by the most daring of sailors, into, to, into a truly international port, welcoming to all, but especially those with money in their pockets. Every day, ships from around the Pacific carry sailors and traders from all around the world stopping at the docks, loading or unloading cargo into or out of the storages, which, with hired help always available from the people of Magadan if they need it. The success in, in its function as a port has made Magadan a key part of the federa federal economy, bringing great wealth into Siberia and enriching all involved in the industry. At the same time, the promise of riches and greatness has attracted many from across the federation to the city, making Magadan grow and even blossom. The addition of a new significant port to those already existing along the Pacific has also caused an increase in the trade in the region, benefiting the partners of the federation as well. In the end, it seems everyone seems to be winning. But so, spread the SIP plan. Before the war, Central Siberia was the site of one of the greatest planned industrial developments in history. The SIP plan transformed a backwards region into industrial hub and a center of production. Our newly acquired eastern territories are mostly untouched by the SIP plan, and their missing skill industry pales in comparison to that of our heartland. The east must be brought up to standard. We should develop the Far East the same way the Soviets developed inland Siberia. A program of state planned industrial projects will serve the foundations for new production centers in the east. We will go further than the Soviets, though. While the SIP plan was strictly managed by the state, ours will, be, will collaborate with our local corporations, helping establish strong private industry in the Far East. Um, we're looking pretty good already. Uh, I'm this a meeting of the military. I met Consultant was surprised by the size of Vasily Shukshin's office. He had managed, or imagined, the man challenging Kokrishkin for the presidency of the Federation would have a corner office with large windows framing an impressive desk and rows of file cabinets and bookshelves along the walls. Shukshin's workplace was not that. It was not quite a walk in closet, but it wasn't far off. Shukshin noticed the military man looking around with a puzzled expression and chuckled. I know it ain't much, but when you're challenging the incumbent president from within his own government, it isn't a surprise when your accommodations get suddenly downgraded. Sultan nodded. My current office has a nice view of the river. I suppose I could, shouldn't get too attached to it in case this meeting becomes public knowledge. Shukshin grinned and nodded. Speaking of, I have another meeting in a few minutes, so let's get down to business. I don't want you to risk that view for nothing. Very well, Sultan said, holding out on a file he held under his arm. It's a list of officers in the military that I believe that we might be sympathetic to our cause. Take a moment and let me know who you want me to contact. Shukshin opened the file and glanced over the list of names. Do you trust these men, he asked. Sultan hesitated before he spoke. They're all talented and loyal to the Federation. Some I trust more than others, which I mentioned in the file, but I think all of them are at least potentially persuadable. Shukshin nodded. Very good, that's all for now. I'll get back to you tomorrow with a list of who I want to con contact first. The Sultan turned to walk out of the tiny office. There, were, there was work to be done. Time to find out where the military stands and commissarial training. A long, hard lap of farming would certainly have prepared a real slump for the hardships of military training, or so he had thought. The reality was very different. Indeed, the man uh, at the enlistment station, he had been all smiles. His boot camp. Instructor was all frowns, along with the shouting and angry sides. 
Uh, he woke every morning in a pitch dark, marched until he was exhausted, instructed and then tested on the lessons afterwards, and shoveled as much food down as possible, and then fell into an exhausted sleep, only to repeat the process the next day. Despite the hardship, however, Rosan cannot say that he hated the experience. He has learned the skills of both military and organizationals, making many friends besides. Friends from all over the region, from areas they only had heard of in passing, and they were fascinating. He could not wait till he completed training and got a chance to see the land of whatever region he was assigned to. He knew that now this was his destiny. It was career. He, the better future he had hoped for. Enthusiasm is always to be valued. So, I see attack helicopters. Scout helicopters, we're not going to use those. Those just the, the benefits of... Oh. Some ships here. Um, the normal cavalry... Uh, you know, just goop them all up. It doesn't matter. You know what? We have a navy. We don't even need them. Screw it. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. We don't even need these ships. It's costing us you know, some money we don't have. 90%? Nice. What was I saying? I forget. It's been in the coalition. When Shuk Shun opened the door to meet Ahmed Khan Sultan's office, he found the former ace staring out of the window that overlooked the river. Wordlessly, Shuk Shun walked over to stand beside him. Both men stared out over the winding waterway. Oh, if you want to about better research facilities, please go right ahead as well. Beautiful. Now I'll get back to schools eventually. Wordlessly, Shuk Shun walked over to stand beside him. Both uh, men uh, stared out over the winding waterway for the few seconds before Sultan spoke. I will really miss this view. I'll spend many hours taking it in, but I think about anything or nothing. At least the sacrifice should not have been in vain. Shukshin glanced at him, over at him curiously. The Sultan continued. I found 15 other officers who are willing to endorse you publicly. Most are from the army, but a few are from the Air Force and even got one promising candidate from the Naval Academy. Now eight of them, including. The ones from your Air Force are only willing to endorse as a group. Strength in numbers, I suppose, but as an endorsement, and it is an endorsement. Should this be enough to assure the people in the military isn't 100% behind Bokushkin? I'd not be being criticized for being too weak on foreign policy. Shukshin grinned. Fifteen, he murmured. I thought we'd be lucky to get ten. The army started playing second fiddle to the Air Force, Sultan replied, and the Air Force wants to hedge his bet in case you win. Shukshin nodded. Thank you, Ahmed Khan. You've done better than I could have ever hoped. If I win, you can have whatever office you like. Sultan turned his eyes back to the river, a small smile on his face. This one will do just fine, sir. But in the Central Design Bureau. When, war, when Russia was fractured into dozens of warlords, the armies and pilots of the Nova Soberis had only one advantage over their foes. While they could not match the numbers or fanaticism of their opponents, they knew they were always fighting with the best equipment Russia had to offer. This was solely because of the Central Design Bureau and its fantastic, innovative weaponry it produced. The days of warlords behind us, but the Bureau so proves its worth, its staff of designers, engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs all working around the clock to make the next breakthrough that will change how wars are fought forever. We must increase our investment in the Bureau, and now that we have access to more wealth and resources than ever before. If they could create groundbreaking new aircraft on a shoestring budget, imagine what they'll be able to do with the resources of all Russia at their disposal. I really want to do this one to see what this one's like. The Barnall Rally. On a normal night, the Barnall Theater would be hosting a local musician or an amateur dramatic company to deba de debuting a new production, and it will draw a decent audience of the residents of the whole city whose name the theater bore. But this was no normal night, and the main event was not scheduled to start for two more hours, and there were already lines around the block. As soon as the doors opened, people excitedly filed in, taking any seat they could find within half an hour uh, of opening its doors. The barn had closed had closed them again. For the first time in decades, every seat in the house was full. Even the standing room in the back was packed solid. The exact excited chattering of the audience suddenly quieted as the lights winked or and dimmed, the sign that things were about to begin. From backstage, Vasily Shukshin took one last deep breath, patted the speech in his pocket, and walked out into the light. The theater, uh, silent theater, immediately roared back to life, all 2,500 people there clapping and cheering for him before he even said a word. As he took to the podium, he couldn't help but grin like an idiot. Thank you, Bonnall, he said. The speakers are allowing him to make himself heard over the clamor. Uh, the speech was supposed to be the last 30, th lasting 30 minutes, but with the audience cheering and chanting, it stretched out almost an hour. Additional speakers outside of the theater delivered Shukshin's words to even the larger crowds outside on the streets. The next morning, the headline in every major newspaper in the Federation was about Shukshin's rally, most touted as a huge victory. A massive sign of enthusiasm for the opposition candidate. Even papers lords of Bokushkin couldn't help but acknowledge that the rally had been a success for his opponent. We will need a bigger venue next time. National Priority Projects. It's clear everywhere we look that rushes are rebuilding, shops are opening, vacant buildings are being thought, filled, and new ones are being built. Shows are fully stocked for the first time ever, and the people are going back to work. Uh, but there's so much work to do. We've come far, but there's still a long way to go before Russia is fully ready to retake its place on the modern global stage. Oh. Oh crap, there's a little bit of like my bad. Oh, but if you like to do about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead as well. Ooh, our GDP is actually higher than our debt. Nice. Uh, it is our duty as a motherland's government to help her get there. Look at that. Beautiful. To assist the recovery and rebuilding efforts, four programs have been selected for government funding and support, dubbed the National Priority Project by the media. Uh, they focus on improving public health, access to education, housing availability and quality, and agriculture development. By supporting improvements in these four vital areas, we are progressing towards a point where Russia is not just reunified, but rebuilt and prosperous at last. Towards a glorious future, though. 
To be Russian these days is to watch destiny unfold before your eyes. It's to see a nation rising from the ashes like a phoenix. Born for the most unlikely of embers. No one could have guessed an ace pilot leading a ragtag band of military men and a disaffected local politicians would establish the next government of Russia. Who would have guessed a warlord army operating out of Novosibirsk would reunite the entirety of eastern Russia and against all the odds? The Federation is persistent now sounds trumpet. It's final victory drawing near. To be Russian these days. I just stand on the middle point of a long road. Behind you are the decades of suffering and violence that have been over that have been overcome. Ahead uh, lies great uncertainty and the potential for a complex to put all the hardships of the past to the shame, but there's also the potential for something brighter, something better. Russia's come so far so quickly. The only thing left to do is keep pushing forward to whatever lies at the end of the road. Assessio plebis. We're not gonna keep working, Volkov. Uh, Alexander Ivanovich Volkov looked up from his office desk and the seeming seeming black afternoon coffee treasured. An empty bottle of whiskey rattled as he thrust it up the sickly green office chair and stood on his swollen feet. What the crap do you mean, Nikolaev? I pay you dudes a smut iron, not wine. Get back on the floor. No, you don't understand, Nikolaev said. We've been in crunch for the last three weeks. I haven't gone home in four days. Some of my friends, people that I've worked with for years, haven't seen their families in a week. He took a step into Volkov's office, crossing the line from the concrete floor uh, work floor to the carpet factory owner's office. I understand this contract with the Federation is important, but we, we all need the business to do well. But we can't keep working 80, 90, 100 hour weeks. Listen to me carefully, Volkov said. I don't get this contract complete by the end of the month. Every darn one of us is going to be out of a job. The Federation, the crap, the stupid Slovaki will never work with us again. That means no suppliers, no buyers, nothing. Do you want your family to starve? Gosh darn you, gosh darn tyrant, Nikolai's, Nikolai's fat. I know that. The crap, go, contract. It's the only thing we've heard from you for months. What about Ivan's new baby? What about Peter's wife? Or haven't you heard her dis diagnosis as terminal? You need to hire more men. Volkov pounded his fist on a desk. Coffee spilled from a chipped white mug. Soaking the carpet and foul mess. I don't have the money for that, he screamed. The five new employees, you dude, we're going on strike. When is the election over? Oh, in 70 days. He's making moves, huh? In 70 days? Okay, not bad. Into the wild. Yaroslav quietly crouched down and inspected a small set of footprints sitting deep into the woods. They were fresh. He was getting closer, he thought, and then, uh, with a net in one hand and a small cage in the other. He'd been wandering around the woods south of Novus Abyss for the last few days. However, the exhausted hunter was sure that his chase would soon be at an end. As he crossed the stream, Yaroslav slid let outside. Tata might have paid well, but he was seriously questioning his duty to take the job. After all, manholes were not uncommon, and indeed there were surely places they could be they could buy one for their zoo. Then again, maybe it was just a desire for quality, and maybe again he was not the only unlucky dude doing this given the zoo's ever expanding size. Sitting from the other bank, he could make out more tracks and leading to a cave as he got closer. He got all Slav's eyes wide as he finally got a look at the target. The large fluff ball sitting outside looking at his fur, carefully approached, keeping his eyes locked on the target. Unfortunately for him, the sound of a branch under his boot ruined his plan. <clears throat> locking eyes. Yaroslav began running towards the manual, hoping a corner in the cave, but the plan worked as the man manual uh, retreated into the cave, but only for a moment. From the darkness, a frightening manual leaped at Yaroslav, climbing up his leather jacket and a run for his face. Yet he had come prepared for this, thinking quickly, dropped the cage and grabbed it by the neck with his newly freed hand. Now confused, the manual found itself swooped up in a net before being thrown into the small cage on the floor. They also have breathed a sigh of relief. The hard part of the job was done, only with a few scratches. However, his stomach dropped, looking at the grumpy feline, remembering he was still far from done. Not a transport it back. As we're still doing this, we project Molinia, Axis Nuclear Interface. But, Amesitia Bultra Est. Alexander Ivanovich Volkov picked up the receiver on his new phone. He's a deeply unhappy man, he realized. The Ivan of Ironworks, his father's legacy, the fact that he tore in his hands apart brick, building brick by brick, was silent. Silent as a grave. Selling as a crapping a museum. He traces his pudgy finger down the phone's gray plastic spine. Why can people be more like, be more like machines? If he needed his car, he turned it on. If a part broke, he paid someone to replace it. When he drove a long way to uh, visit his dadushka, or his wife's family, he wouldn't get any love from the rusty carburetor. His employees were disappointments and cowards to a man. If the useless dudes had his father's work ethic, then the ironworks would spit worth a mountain of product every week, but they had betrayed him. Alexander called a certain number. The phone rang only twice before his connection answered. Maxim Yurevich. This is Alexander Ivanovich. We met at Tomsk at the business conference. Yes, this is after the war. How's little Alexei? Volkov reached into his desk drawer, blindly groping for a cigar and lighter. Yes, they grow up so quickly, he said. As his finger found the old cold metal of the starter. You should be proud. <clears throat> That's when I was calling about the contract. Yeah, the one with Phoenix. No. We've been off schedule for over a month now. We'd be a heck of a lot better if my entire gosh darn workforce had walked out the line. Those communist dudes have no idea what I've sacrificed to keep them in a job. Alexander said he paused to get, strike the lighter and uh, press a golden flame into the cigarette's head. Every single one of them. Every single one. Listen, I have an idea, Alexander said. You know what that kid at Sibir's housing institution's branch? Inissa? Yes. Inissa Nikolaev. Nikolaev, no. He took a splash, or a splash, uh, pulled a cigar. The smoke filled his lungs like a fine wine splashing into a crystal de decanter. It was beautiful and soothing like the crash of the waves upon the beach. Can you call in a favor for me, Alexander said. 
anything for a friend, nuclear interface. Oh, this is different. Research any application of fundamental nuclear physics into military use. Using political power to mingle with our nuclear program, we can help the state manipulate our government to devote certain additional reserves or resources into the nuclear program. Every week, additional political power input will result in us getting 0% closer to stage completion. Check how much you invest using the info button. Well, right now, we're done coring stuff. And SP-71, I believe, yeah, to force to start going to war, so. I think we're pretty good here. If you were to kill people, more stability would be nice, but not, absolutely not needed. Um, yeah, this has looked all the same before, but okay. Uh, research. <clears throat> Diverting research from other, more conventional technologies may contribute to early completion. Money. Endless flow of gold will guarantee the survival of the Siberian Federation. Uh, where is the info button? Oh. We're using one more political power every single day. We don't need that much, right? Okay, uh, research. And 10%, we have our research speed reduced by 10%. Investing no money into it right now. I kind of don't want to invest any more money into it for now. I want to focus on the economy. Uh, so now, what does this do? Stage 1. Theoretical development. Oh, interactions. Developed physics institutes, issued research grants, study foreign designs, approach immigrant scientists. No, uh, non domino. Um, how much? Do we still get 3.68? Um, I still want to keep some because we, we will need to build it up for all the stuff over here, as well as this stuff over here, too. So, uh, Nikolai sat on his filthy couch listening to his wife rage. The love of his wife, Kitsinya Denilovna, paced across the tattered wood of their house mouse, mouse sized apartment. <clears throat> How could you be so irresponsible, my heart? You have come. You should have come to me. You have told me you were planning on the stump before you threw away our future. Nikolai, I've tried not to roll his eyes. My love, I haven't thrown our future away. The bills might be tight for a week or two, but once Volkov realizes he needs us, I'll be work, uh, back at work. And if God wills it, he'll give us a human shifts. Did you know Ivan haven't seen his newborn in six days, he said? Katsina paused. We should send them some sriniki. Poor Katarina must be exhausted. They're taking care of that little devil for a week alone. I doubt she slept eight hours in as many days. Stop it, Nikolai. This wasn't his fault. He has colic. I know Nikolai said, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the strike. I wanted to see you again and spend time with you, and I felt for the others. It just seems like no matter what we do, someone is always asking more of us. <coughs> Sinya smiled. I sat next to her husband. I know, my love, it is difficult to be a man, to care for others and show the responsibility of taking care of them. But I'm proud of you, and I love you very much. We'll get through this together. When's the last time a woman said that to you? Anyways, Nikolai smiled, we'll get through this. A terrible thunder is knocking at the warped door and interrupted him. A letter slid through the dusty cracks between the portal and the floor. Nico picked out the letter with trembling hands and opened it. Dear tenants, he said, Severe Housing Solutions has been notified that you're not currently engaged in meaningful employment. Tenants are required to maintain sufficient income to pay monthly rental fees, as specified, specified in your contract. If you do not acquire gainful employment within the next 14 days, Severe Housing Solutions will be forced to move, you, move to evict you. Iniesta Ivanov, Regional Manager, Customer Service, and Nikolai wept. <clears throat> Does this cost anything? Not political power. Uh... Okay, so 35% stage complete every month will be 0.8% closer to stage completion. And once the stage is complete, after some time, the next stage will be unlocked. Project Letusia Listia. Partial success. Through a small combination of uh, ingenuity and determination, our designers have managed to produce a modern, capable combat aircraft. The MIG-25 prototype has recently completed its final round of testing, and the results have been good, but the prototype has fallen short in several areas. The MIG-25 has demonstrated an operational speed of Mach 2.83 and a maximum speed of Mach 3.6, making it one of the fastest combat aircraft ever designed. However, it is unusually heavy for an interceptor aircraft, and its weight is a necessity of unusually large wings for a plane of its class. <clears throat> Our pilots have shown an ability to affect effectively at the MG MIG's 25's high speeds, but they have noted that the plane is still less maneuverable than they would prefer. The design has several issues to be resolved, but the MIG-25 uh, or MiG-25 will be fully ready for production and deployment, and once it takes to the skies, will be able to stand against any air force in the world better late than ever. I'm going to invest even more political power now. Screw it. Argumentum, argumentum ad cruniman. Alexander Volkov smiled. And finally, everything was going according to plan. The ironworks were belching flame and dust as they digested ore into the purified refined oil. Pure refined oil. Iron. The iron that will save the country, the iron that will pave the way to the Russian future, and yes, the iron that fills his pocketbook to the brim. The founder's uh, son was almost sick with glee as he pranced from the workstation to workstation, gazing over the shoulders of dozens of paroles, paroles laboring for him. For him, Ivan Volkov, his father, had been a titan of business. Men had followed him almost instinctively, like a pack of wolves stalking behind their alpha. He'd been the pinnacle of that uh, man, a loyal party member, a good father. But all of that was dust now. Everything had been blown to the bits in the anarchy except the ironworks. The ironworks were his father's legacy, and now they were his. <clears throat> 
Alexander couldn't command the respect his father once did. And that was fine. If he couldn't leave with a carrot, then he'd leave with a stick. Anything to keep the iron flowing, anything to keep the factory bellowing like an enraged beast, searing the sky with ash and smoke, it was beautiful in its own way, and never let such beauty starve. No, the beast would feed. The ironworks would be suckled by the hundreds of strong Russian men, giving them of themselves for the country and the beast, and every thrust, every strain of muscles, every burn, and every drip of sweat that was by his will. He saw the industry, and behold, it was good. The hand of the diligent will bear dominion, but the slothful will endure slavery. So now we're at 36%. 1% uh, closer to stage completion every month. That's going to take a lot of time, and I don't want to invest any money to it because I want to actually cut down. Oh, it went up, and then it was further up. Oh, was it because we spent money in the research thing? Probably. Or because of the nuclear stuff. Some sort of nuclear stuff. I don't know. Where are we going for research? Advanced research facility is very nice. I think Vasily Shukshin is probably going to win. Just feeling. Just feel. All right. So what do we have here? Uh, proof of fighters. Yeah. Uh, planes, guns. That's not bad. We're gonna need more of that. Cast is okay for now. Um, a few more transport helicopters. Oh, I feel like we're gonna need quite a few more of those guys. I actually have a, a very good feeling that we're gonna need a lot more of those guys. But right now we're at ninety-five point five. It's gonna go up a little bit higher. Ten percent growth. Holy crap! Inflation's. You know, less than 5%, so it's not really too much of a worry for us. 95.5%, we're at 2 credit rating fair. We're in the economic sphere, which gives us a little bit of boost as well. 95.2%, beautiful. It's only 10%, 10 10% real growth. 5.5% inflation. Whatever. And we're almost getting to acceptable, too. All writers, museums. Vasily Shukshin was many things, a writer, actor, poet, a mayor, a politician. He climbed his way from the son of peasants in Altay to become the second most powerful man in the Federation and the champion of democracy. However, as he sat at home, waiting for the results to come in, all he could feel was a trepidation. Months of play campaigning, dozens of speeches, rallies and meetings, weeks of courting corporate representatives, and sympathetic Siloviki had led to this. He crisscrossed Siberia from Magadan to Kolpashevo, and now the only thing he'd do is wait. Shukshin stared at the bottle of vodka on his desk, resisting the temptation to pour himself a drink. But Kushkin and his allies would use every trick in the book to keep themselves in power, and all he could do was hope that the will of the people would be strong enough. The tallies came in agonizingly slowly, Shukshin's heart soaring at every positive result and sinking with every poor showing. But they were clear. Putting the bottle aside, Shukshin made preparations to move to Novosibirsk. The people had spoken, and they wanted to pull Kushkin out to democracy. Breathe. Look at this handsome guy. How handsome. Loyalty and power still pretty decent. Oh, the wings have changed. Winds have changed. The people have spoken, and the will is clear. After years of rule, Alexander Pokushkin has finally tasted defeat at the ballot box, and Vasily Shukshin has been elected to lead the Federation towards, towards a bright new future. Shukshin and his supporters have announced plans for a bold new wave of liberalization reform that they say will finally bring freedom in Russia that needed. Freedom and democracy to Russia. While Shukshin's supporters are celebrating his victory, those who back Pokushkin's continued rule are already voicing their concerns. The leaders of the military have expressed uh, reservations about a weakening of the central government, and the boards of, new, of Russia's new management corporations is expected to be much more difficult to deal with a government that is truly beholden to the interests of the people. They don't complain all they like. They shall be the first tyrants to fall before the might of a free Russia, but not the last. New French Constitution, huh? Cool. Good. Actually, we're going to do that because we won't need... Eh, we don't need that, but that'll be beneficial to have. 1970, looking pretty darn swankerino. Yes, the almighty airborne. So now we only get 0.14, that's really bad. But right now, we're already at 68%. 7% closer to stage completion. Nice! We're rushing through that as fast as we can. Oh, it's already August. Uh, give us until... These guys haven't even done killing each other yet. And Dukachevsky is doing a little bit worse than I thought that he would. I thought Mario here, you know, Lazar Kavganovich, which people don't like playing, me playing as, or just be, people playing in general, but whatever. Um, they, I don't know, who, who do they hate? Oh my god, they have a fiscal crisis. No wonder they're not doing well, but uh, the Almighty Airborne. No manpower. They both have no manpower. Ooh, that's gonna make it easy for us. Hopefully. Uh, observing it as his men went about their interminable duties, General Vasily Margulov knew that, if nothing else, he had at least made his soldiers ready for what was to come. The Federation was strong, but these men were strong. The Federation stood ready to last at, at last, to read at the motherland by any means necessary, and these men would lead the charge in any for the conflict towards that goal. They truly become a unit he could be proud of, as his father is of his children. One of them walked up to him, delivering a perfectly crisp slew before beginning to deliver a scheduled report. Mardigalov could barely make out the words, however, too lost in his own thoughts. As confident as he was in their ability, he only more hardship awaited them now as they began to move west. He was confident that they were ready, of course. The question was, would being ready be enough? 
There was no way of knowing if it, even the best of Russia's soldiers could win the wars to come, and more importantly, which, which of them would make it back alive. As a man before him finished his report, Margulov nodded and sent him off to be alone with his thoughts and anxieties. A father worries for his children just as he is proud of them. I guess I wouldn't know. I guess I'm not a father. I hope I'm not a father. I also hope though. Hey, but even that, dead interest got even lower. Growth is 10%. It's going to just help us get rid of that GDP ratio as much as possible. Deficit's actually green. If we could, we do ta tax side to help lower the deficit even more, but freedom's champion. Let's look at President of the Siberian Federation turn towards his rapt audience. The thousands of eagerly waiting the fine words of his inaugural address. He didn't have a prepared speech per se. He couldn't fix the country's many problems with a professional speechwriter. No, this was the start of a new kind of administration. The people had suffered enough. First from Bukharin's authoritarianism and mismanagement. And then from the CSR and the misguided idealism who had gotten so many killed in their failed wars. Finally, Bukhrushkin and his corporate backers who in the endless pursuit of stability and wealth had forgotten the average Russian. There'll be no more of that. Not on his watch. Some may have sympathized with his cause to bear in their backers, but panics tightened, and the rest of them were vino, corrupt, and heartless. Ruled by a hundred would be dictators. To the heck with them. The supremacy of the corporations and the rise of the Siloviki, the bastardization of the Federation's ideals, those have been the final straws, the acts which made good people stand up and retake their destiny. And so he spoke. Fellow citizens, I have not come to begin with a revolution. I have come to fulfill the ideals of which we have not forgotten. The crowd cheered wildly. He smiled, basking in the love of his fellow citizens. It would be a hard, long row, but President Shukshin knew he could make things right again. The winds have changed. Beautiful as they are. Hey, power. <laughs> not bad. Could be better, though. Um, you know what? What's over here? Loyalty and power. Now we're cooking even more. What are you even building up here? Just roads. That's fine with me. Whatever. Curve. Oh, oh, we lose political power. We lose daily political power. Nope. Curve the corporations. A new piece of legislation has been introduced recently that will put in place some token limitations on the activities of the corporations. The limits are trivial best and mostly have to do with implementing the bare minimum of government oversight on stock trading. But the proposed law also has attracted significant attention from the people and the corporations for one reason. It used to be the case that legislation like this would be shot down immediately before going to a vote, but this is no longer the case. President Shukshin will place his full support behind the law and encourage his supporters to do the same. On paper, it really is a little more than a token effort, but it'll signal to the whole nation that Shukshin is no crony of the corporations. We may not be able to end their influence right away, but we can make it clear to the world that the days of the Russian con uh, companies exploiting Russian people for foreign money will soon be over. Oh, and the oil crisis is slowly going to start. Democratization. Shukshin's victory is a triumph for the cause of Russian freedom, but it's only the first step on the road towards democracy. Bukhrushkin and his toadies spent years building up the powers and doing their darndest to turn Russia into a one-party state once more. Undoing their efforts will take time, and we must begin with a small reform to prepare the nation for the greatest changes it has in store. Soon the government will launch a new initiative called Democratization. Democratization. Starting at the local level, oh boy. The people of Russia will now be able to elect their leaders and representatives. Once a sufficient permanent election structure is in place, we will be able to organize the regularly scheduled elections at last. Other earlier reforms include passing term limits and preparing to implement a separation of powers among the various departments of the government. So maybe it won't be so easy to take these guys out. Tukhachevsky is here. Um, give us one more month. Screw it. In the office. Well, it seemed like a hundredth uh, time that day, Vasily Shukshin looked over the legislation crowding the president's, no, his desk. It's so hard to believe that the presidency, for so long the preview of Pokrushkin and his ilk, was now in the hands of a peasant from Altay, but he was here, and it was his. Picking up one of the main pages on his desk, Shukshin looked over it once more, slowly flipping through the contents. Workers' protections, new regulations and company lobbying, and other vectors of corporate influence, stringent antitrust laws, it wouldn't be enough to defang the corporations not by a long shot. Their influence reached too far deep, or too far to, for a mere piece of legislation to reverse the impact of a decade of unfettered exploitation, but it was a start. The corporate giants and Pokrushkin's clique would fight them off every step of the way, their lackeys in the Duma and the Siloviki, who had long been paid off. <clears throat> With corporate gold, Shukshin, however, had the will of the people and the power of the presidency on his side. It is good to be president. Where are we for this one? Oh, we're so close. Next month. Okay, so with that in mind, we gotta convert these guys now back to these guys. And now we're not gonna have, we're gonna have a huge deficit. 97%, 10%. We'll see how bad it really hurts us. Very soon. Very, very soon. So we're doing these two, which is very nice. Better planes, just please. Ooh, hello, no, actually, we're not gonna convert you. Uh, we're not gonna have enough time to train these guys, but whatever. And the oil crisis has erupted. Hopefully we're not really affected by it. Oh boy, are we out of anything? Hopefully not. Dreams of a federation after sourcing foreign materials. Oh, and everything's falling apart. But what else is new? 
When it was originally conceived, the Russian Federation was supposed to be Russia's best chance at democracy. The idealism of the Central Siberian Republic was always doomed to a failure, here, but the Federation could provide a, pro a practical, reasonable alternative that would reunite the Russian lands of people and secure a future defined by freedom and stability. What it morphed into under Pokushkin's rule is a bastard as authoritarian imitation of the original goal, but the damage could still be undone. Slowly, sure, the people of Russia are starting to wake up. They're realizing that this new president promises are not false, and his words are not empty, of course. The Russian Federation can really be a nation of practical democracy rather than a corrupt authoritarianism. After decades of bitter winters, spring is coming to the motherland. And look at a writer and a falcon. Ah, happy de December. So now what happens with the nuclear research? I don't know how, but we're like 54 minutes into this video. How what the heck? I really enjoyed Tino you know, way too much. So with that in mind, this one was almost done. Five more days left. Lose a little bit of stability and political power. What else is new? Uh, we don't actually we're losing political power every day. Oh, that's not good. Hold on. So with that in mind, uh, wrong one. Over here. So the, here we go. Stage one is complete. Every month will be 5.6, 5.9 percent closer to stage completion. And now we're in stage two. Oh, we should be getting there. Oh, so now we're here. Okay. Material procurement. Developing through the art uranium extraction facilities to purchase foreign equipment. So the question is, how much does this actually cost? National debt, 0.499. Oh, so it does cost a little bit of money. It doesn't say, oh, if the devs are watching, which I doubt they are, I'd recommend in the future, if you could, like, explain how much this costs, because it, it, you would assume it costs something, right? So, it would have to. Chase the sun, huh? Okay, I kind of want to do this one first. That's a huge freaking cost, $6 billion every month. A yearly deficit, $6 billion. Um, but, you know, growth is pretty... Freaking good though. Uh, poverty less than thirty percent. That's, that's so good. And industrial equipment. We're about to get go from factory complexes to modern industrial equipment. Oh my gosh! Even academic basis thirteen. Secondary schooling go up to here too. What does it mean by you need a consumer goods? Like is that the just consumer goods that they need? Like consumer goods like like normal consumer goods? Maybe I assume so. But a rider and a falcon. It was early in the morning, doing the two-man man in the many rooms of the presidential palace. Flames flickering in the fireplace. Snow melt falling from the frost-covered roof. The new and former president of the Siberian Federation glancing at each other uneasily. They have been friends once, comrades in arms during the final days of the Republic. Those days were long gone. A friendship strained and broken amidst the rise of the Federation. Where did it all go wrong, Vasily? When did we lose our way? Shukshin glanced up at Pokrushkin's voice, the falcon of Siberia staring, staring down into his drink. There was no malice in his eyes, no resentment, just a colorless pallor and a resigned expression. Shukshin stared at his own drink for no response, no answer to give. To the question that he himself had pondered on many a sleepless night, he could still faintly remember the optimism in the Federation's early days, the final break from the decaying Republic amidst the chaos of the Siberian War and the anarchist revolts, a time where the Federation seemed to have a place for everybody, regardless of ideology or wealth. Before the corruption and cynicism set in, before the rise of the Siloviki and the corporations, he could point to many a time where he or Bukhurskin should have stepped in, but should have moved to rein in the excesses of the system, but the Federation itself was a reaction, a result of the idealism of the poets and artists in Tomsk. Perhaps the cynicism which arose in the idealism's place was simple yet because another, yet another inevitable, another result of the Republic's failure. Shukshin looked back up at his compatriot. The Falcon was waiting for an answer, and so he spoke the honest truth. I don't know, Pokrushkin. I don't know. So if we don't have any political power here, would it be worse to, like, I'm getting 0% closer. Oh, okay, so we have none, so 0% closer, so that's okay. Um, yeah, interesting. I just wanted to see if we could, like, invest even more and more and more and more. Uh, to see if we could, like, we're not going to take any, lose any more political power. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. And now is part of the episode where we're going to end up going to war with uh, the other Russians. Uh, Tukhachevsky, to say at least. Uh, hope, we're, hope we're ready. Our guys are mostly trained. Hopefully. Um, let's see. Armored trains would be kind of cool. I don't really need them, though. I prefer that one. Uh, Division-wise, we're attacking with the same division as I showed you earlier. Uh, if we replace that with attack helicopters, would it be better or worse? You get way more, way, 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 way more breakthrough. You lose a little bit of soft attack, but the breakthrough might make it up. A little more organization, actually, too. Better HP, piercing, less reliability, more fuel usage, of course. Um, will we have enough attack We actually have enough attack helicopters. We actually do. But that's for after the war's over, of course. Um, air superiority wise we should be okay. They have up to 20 divisions. We have only 25 Which honestly is not going to be enough to get, take out the, the Germans, especially under Bormann. Bormann's going to have a monstrosity of just just numbers. I mean, you don't even have to think about it. He's going to have a massive amount of numbers So, uh, losses thus far. 8,000 versus 18,000. Not bad. I do kind of wish we could see how much he has. Uh, I guess in the meantime, Intelligence Agency, we could probably be developing this too. 
probably be for the best. We do have some person here though. That's kind of nice. Um, we probably can't help out there, can you at all? We are destroying them bit by bit though. I didn't know it is costing us. Um, in the meantime, let's see what this is like. Also, we did get Koroko Dazzle, only partial success, not super important. Uh, let's see. Halfway through stage two. Very nice. 6.9% closer. No political power? Uh, well, I guess at this point we should probably stop investing so much in a Project Molina. We'll have plenty enough time to get that done too, but, uh, let's see. We need that political power back now. So it's only going to... That's 63%. 5.3%. Interception. Air superiority and ground support. Because we start, we got to start getting some political power so we can core all this stuff too when we're done here. So that's a good goal to get. Um... Engineering is fine. Planes. Better planes. Better cast. Better fighters. Better everything else like that. We got plenty of manpower too. Look at that. What are they, what are they lacking? Hey, to go radar. Nice. Very nice. We're going to build some stuff in Novosibirsk. Why do we have only... Oh, because we're building up the city stuff. The intelligence agency. Losses. 35,000 versus 80... 90,000. Nice. Nice. Additional investments. For less than 100,000 manpower, 36 divisions maxed. Moder modernize uh, this thing. I don't think we'll be able to get this done before we actually get there. Yeah, 500 days is kind of a bit extreme. That's a lot of divisions here, though. That's a lot of divisions. How about if we can? If not, okay, whatever. Yeah, they're almost literally dead. Oh my gosh. I might replace all that artillery we have. Honestly, I want this guys to be even thicker, if possible, but happy July, everybody. Happy flipping July. I actually, after this war, I might uh, have only, like, one full army stack, of, like, one full general army stack filled with normal soldiers, and then cut them down again. Let's save a little bit of money. And we're not even doing the land auction yet. 38. That's not bad. We're getting closer to where I really want them. 40 count, is where I want them, though. Alright, uh, Iran's gotten exploded. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Yeah, upgrades it all. No, we're good. And upgrades for you, Valerie. No. Alexei. Nestor. No, okay. And Iraq is, well, almost completely done blowing itself up. Help them out. There we go, here too. Just demolishing them. Yeah, seriously, getting aerosol companies on these guys would be very nice. But at this sees power, maybe battle tanks. Yeah, I wish we had more support companies here. I really wish we had more. Could you replace that one with this one? You lose how much piercing? 22 piercing. We're, we and we have to have piercing for the other guys, so. I'll have 30 Western Africa. Uh, we should be on local autonomy now and on garrisons. Base by promoted. Did I not ever switch that? Oh, that's my bad. Um, there we go. Yeah, actually, we're probably still making so much artillery for assault airplanes. That much more breakthrough, which is so good. But we'll get that for the next uh, war or wars to come. I love all the green. Happy August, everybody. Debt to GDP ratio is about. Ooh, it's almost 100%. It's literally almost 100%. Nice. Reconnaissance, sweeping tactics. Where are we at? So 10% growth, less than 5%. We could get war taxes. Much war support and growth too, though. We gotta save our political power. How's air speed already looking? It's looking positively green. They do have a couple planes here, though. But we have quite a few planes as well. So, and we have so much cast. I really make sure we had enough cast. Of course, we need more fighters by the time we're done here. So getting out of the long knives, very good to last forever. We'll see how that ends up for Borman. Probably not very smart to do for him, but whatever. We've already killed a million other Russians. Not because we wanted to, but because we had to. Just completely demolished. Oh, we do that. Uh, yeah. A quarter million have died. Good job, guys. Nice. Seven billion. Oh, God. But as long as we conquer more and more and more and more. It'll be okay. 
give a couple of days of planning. Oh, they're already going anyways, whatever. Beautiful. Uh, wrong one. There we go. Cryptographic Engineering. Happy September now, everyone. I know this video is a little longer than normal, but it is what it is. Now, since we're here, we have time build political power. Loyalty. Need more loyalty. There you go. Keep building the roads. How could you not win here? Do you not have air superiority? You should. Absolute air superiority. More attack. Nice. Can you win right here? Oh, because it's over river, isn't it? Oh, but yeah. Uh... Just kill them all off. That's all you have to do. Don't worry about deleting enemies' organizations. Just kill them all off. go. How's Project Millennia going? Eh, yeah, we're getting there. We are definitely getting there, economy-wise. Oh, how do we keep getting more money? I don't know, but I like it. I like it a lot. Easily won against those guys. We're approaching 300,000 couches. Happy o October now. They're just going, blitzing through this. Cryptographic engineering. Yes, better casts. Good. Now for some better planes, or I guess choppers. Pretty very. Oh, we can make them even better. I didn't realize we could. I'm so. I'm not used to that now. Oh, I'll just blitz through them. Get the farm. Beautiful, my friends. Um, with these guys, medbacks would not be bad. Scouts are not worth it. Um, I really like this company that we made. Even the piercing is 171. Probably because of the air assaults. Aerosol companies of transport. Oh, there's kind of ruin. Wait, so these guys give you how much piercing? 64. Aerosol companies are really good. And our air attack gives you a little bit more, too. So maybe instead of anti-tank. Even reducing by that much is not, still not a bad idea. Uh, what else do we need here? Are we missing anything? We won't need a lot of transport helicopters. We don't need APCs. Not for this campaign. Tanks? Nah. Um, maybe just fighters. Jet cast. Transport, we got 20 on those. We'll go with 5 there, and then we'll go on more fighters. Happy November! <coughs> oh, fighters, here we go. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of those guys. Well, they're left with 18 divisions max. They've lost 400,000 men. We've lost 100,000 ourselves, which is not very good. You know, the deficit's very high. 10% growth is still slowly going lower here, which is nice to see. And Project Millennia is 12% uh, away from being completely done there. Beautiful. Oh, Tukachevsky. You had a shot. But my god, he squandered it. Let's take a look at the world. Oh, I'm nice back. The only thing that's left here are you guys. Madagascar's over there. United Arab Federation or States. West African Alliance. Mexico. Yeah. Huh. I guess Italy's by itself. The Italian Empire, but it's fairly democratic, isn't it? Oh no, it's still fascist. Borghese. A <laughs> free fall in popularity. Oh boy. Oh boy. Specialist weapons, nice. Nice. Can you guys keep going in, please? Please. Find and kill the enemies, please. Like, you don't have to even encircle them, just kill them. 
Belorask. Bukun. Let's go there. Let me uh, Victor. Arkhangelsk. Post war. Nice. Nice as well. And we're just here to develop technology as much as possible right now. Advanced transport. Actually, can you get even better advanced transport helis? Nice. You can't. Okay. Good to know. Oh, it's almost Christmas Day. Do we win? Is it us? Or is it Iran? It might be Iran. Oh, it's us! Marshal defeated. Starting, staring out from the western Kre winter Kremlin down to those streets below. The Grand Marshal's lost in thought. How could the Red Army, though strong as evolved from the tiger to the British seas, lose to the forces of capitalism? He did everything right. He instilled discipline. He used superior strategy and theory. He militarized the state. He has head spinning. He could barely hear a Marshal Ustinov's pleas to flee. Grand Marshal, we must go. We don't have much time. There are tunnels that lead us down to the docks. If we leave now, we can. Glass shattering as a bullet ripped through the Ustinov's. Ustinov's throat. Laying on the ground and choking on his own blood, he reached his bloodied hand out to the Grand Marshal. Took a chest, he knelt down and gave his dying protege, Zushanka. Rest easy, friend, he said. A single tear was streaming down his face. The Grand Marshal hurried down the stairs and down to the basement of the Winter Kremlin. He was greeted by the three mo most influential members of the Presidium. Nikolai Podgorny, Grigory Romanov, and Viktor Chernonyadrin. The group unlocked the armory next to the entrance of the tunnels, each taking weapons to defend themselves from the capitalist pigs who would be waiting for them. As they walked down the dim corridor, the sounds of gunfire echoed above them at the end of the tunnel. Chernonhidrin lifted the hatch as the four men climbed out on the ruined street. A submarine was waiting for them in the port. A mere hundred meters away, as the men began to sprint, they became under heavy fire from Shukshin's forces. Bullets whizzed and began to fall one by one. The first, Chernonhidrin, then Romanov, then finally Podgorny offered to hold off the enemy while the Grand Marshal made it the submarine. The two exchanged a glance, a sign of mutual respect. Podgorny crouched behind a rock, returning fire as the Grand Marshal successfully made it into the submarine. He opened the hatch and climbed in. Greeted by the captain of the craft, Tukhachevsky ordered the lad that they leave now and not wait for any other in the harbor. And the rations next to the pilot's head falling down under him. They quickly pulled away from the harbor. Tukhachevsky realized that this would likely be the last time he would be able to see his beloved Russia. The Grand Marshal sat empty as the captain charted a course to Vietnam. Beautiful, my friends. We've done it. Reunify the motherland. Research slot. Higher credit rating. The bonus of the SIP plan will be reduced by 45%. Is that even worth it? What? The Federation unites Russia once again. Having emerged victorious in the power struggle following the collapse of the Central Soviet Republic, this Federation of Novus Obeus Canalte has gone on to expand across all of Russia, integrating or crushing any rivals to its rule. Formerly dominated by the local strongmen, the eponymous Siloviki, ruling in cooperation, cooperation with corporate interests, the newly inaugurated Russian Federation has appeared to turn a new leaf with the election of Vasily Shukshin. Espousing policies of, of environmentalism, anti-corporatism, and increasing democratic participation, President Shukshin made marks a turn away from the corruption and cynicism, which has run rife in the, fed in the nation. The Federation looks well seeking new friends and challenging old foes for the liberation of all Russians, united and free. Beautiful. They evolve ourselves in the Iranian Civil War. Russian Federation intervenes in the Iranian Civil War. Look at that. Oh, it might be too late, though. As the Civil War continues to rage across Iran, Vasily Shukshin has announced the Russian Federation formal intervention of the conflict. Although the Russian Federation's official aims are to restore order to Iran, many international spectators agree that the true purpose of its involvement in the region is to expand their own sphere of influence. Russia has only recently reunified after decades of warlordism and regretty. The Russian Federation has begun to make its moves on the world stage and upsetting the political status quo that has existed since the end of the Second World War. The entry of the Fourth Power in the Iranian Civil War has changed the balance of power in the conflict could, be could become influential in the deciding outcome of the war. Here's commitment. The Shah of Iran. Uh, send land equipment. Well. Might be a bit late. Oh, crap. Might be a bit late to win. Uh. Let's go into the research slot. That's nice. Scout helis, like I said, probably not worth it. Uh, somebody's here to go. Malinia, going well. Integrate all these guys, so do we get another focus tree then? 
Okay, now we can send two divisions. Uh, I don't think we'll make it. But uh, we'll try. Try as we might. Hopefully we don't end up in a bad place, but you never know. Um, but that shouldn't be it for us, right? Because we have a ah, visit to the Ob. The sunrise, the rising sun illuminated the waters of the Ob with a brilliant glow. Orange splotches dancing amidst its glittering, glittering waves. Or waters. They're cleaner now, thanks to new regulations, and you can see several families panicking around the river's banks. I like the way they own this part of Finland, too. Alright, really Russian. Shukshin allowed himself a small drink as he took on the side, remembering that his excursion to the waterfront property nearly a decade ago. Unchecked corporate excess and institutional corruption, a government run by and for the local strongmen. He changed all that. No longer did corporate greed dictate policy and law. No longer were the working class squeezed for every penny. There's still much work to be done, of course. Fair regulations, the issues of Pokrushkin's clique, increased federalization, the ever pressing matter of the hated Germans. Yet, as he saw workers joking around the fields just beyond the river and the families enjoying a vacation for the first time in years, Shukshin felt something stir inside of him. The idealism which was once so infectious in the early days of the Central Siberian Republic. He was doing this for them, for the people, for the Russia, all of Russia, not just b those born into power, those blessed by circumstance. He remembered those days, the heaviness and optimism, and how everything fell apart under the strain of the Siberian War. And the fighting against the anarchists of food riots and the shootings. He poured himself another drink as the morning sun rose high in the sky. The CR CSR may have fallen under the strain of war, but the Federation and his Federation was different, stronger and more robust, yet no less concerned for the welfare of its citizens. It was different than the CSR. It had to be, or everything would have been for nothing. And I was waiting to decor more stuff because we have so much more to do. Wait. Volkischer Beobachter. Why are we reading about the people's newspaper? Huh. A Federation of Hope. After decades of chaos, division, and disrepair, a new hope has merged in the once broken lands of Russia, in the form of the Russian Federation. Yet across the nation, in both liberated and occupied lands, where people are unsure of the future that lies ahead for their motherland. Many fear that the Federation is just another regime in the long line of dictatorships that has since ruled Russia since the nation first appeared in 1547. Others believe the Federation is nothing more than the mere reincarnation of the failed Central Serbian Republic. Others falsely compare its security services to the NKVD. We're not an extension of the horrors and failures of the past. We are the Russian Federation, the best and only hope our motherland has to endure this dark world. I'm uh, laying the groundwork. The President's first order of business, and by extension of the RAPPs, is to completely transform the borderland or stratocratic state Duma into a fully functioning democratic government that truly represents the people of Russia. Naturally, there's been opposition from both the Siloviki and the parts of the Russian public in response to a desire to completely transform the current political establishment. If we're to continue the democratization of the Russian Federation, we'll need to assure the people or the public and work with the others in order to achieve a term the President himself has coined pragmatic diplomacy. Oh, okay, so introduce a concept. Who to form this Federal Assembly with? Work with the Siloviki. Create a modern Siloviki to create the Federal Assembly. New parties. Oh! I don't know. Which one should we do? Should we do work with the Siloviki? Modern Siloviki. Or should we use the new parties? You know what? I'll let you guys decide below. Because this is all brand new stuff. Finally, we've hit the brand new content for uh, Brave New World with Code Talk update at the time of this recording. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Uh oh, but I don't like losing political power. I like stability and, the, and efficiency, but I don't like lack, lack, of, lack of political power. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. Uh, if you did, please consider leaving a like. It does help me out. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in, in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue to explore what else is new for the Russian Federation. Thanks for watching. Have a great shooks and the rest of your day.